Well, now that we know how to name numbers and how to write numbers, the next natural thing to try and do is to do something with them. And so we have what are called a set of binary operations. We take two numbers and then we find a third number that has some relationship to the first two. And our initial binary operation is going to be the operation of addition. Now, it turns out there's two slightly different but completely equivalent definitions of what it means to add. And we'll take a look at the first one, which is based on our piano definition of addition. Uh, this piano here, Giuseppe Piano, is a mathematician at the turn of the 20th century who said, what are we really doing when we do all these basic arithmetic operations? And Piano took them all apart and said, well, here's, here's what we're actually doing. And Piano's idea was based on the fact that we view numbers in two different ways. Uh, one way is we can view them as a set of ordinals. That is, numbers indicate the order that something occurs. And we refer to this when we say first, second, third, and so on. And these are the numbers used ordinally. And what this means mathematically is that given any two distinct numbers, a and B, whatever they happen to be, we can identify which one is smaller and which one is larger, and which one comes earlier in the order and which comes later in the order. And this led to the following. Uh, I can define the set N of natural numbers in the following way. And it's a set that satisfies a number of important properties which Piano described in some detail, but the two that are important for our purposes are the following. Every number, every element of this set has a successor, which we designate a asterisk, a star. And that is, we can read this as, this is the number that follows a, the number after a. And the element that we designate 1 is not the successor to any element of the set of natural numbers. 1 doesn't follow anything. Or, put another way, one is the first natural number. Nothing comes before it. And based on the piano postulates, we can now define all of the natural numbers. And again, one is unusual. It's not the successor to any element. And so, again, informally, this means that it is the first natural number. Nothing comes before it. By the first postulate, every number has a successor. So, well, 1 is a number, so 1 has a successor, which will designate 1 star. And now, because we can apply the first postulate repeatedly, 1 star is a number, and so 1 star has a successor. And we'll designate that as 1 star star. And likewise, 1 star star is a number, so it has a successor, which we'll define as 1 star star star. And we can do this as many times as we like. We can talk about the natural number, one star, 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 star. But after a couple of seconds, our eyes glaze over, and we can we go blind trying to read the parentheses and the asterisks and so on and so forth. And we would find it much easier if we actually had a new symbol that indicates each of these successors. So let's make our lives much easier, and we'll come up with a name for this number that we're calling one star. Thinking, thinking, thinking. We need a name for the number that follows one. Hmm. Well, how about two? Uh, so we'll name the successor of one. We'll call it two, and we'll use our symbol two. And again, since 2 is a natural number, it has a successor, which we can designate 2 star, the number after 2. And thinking, 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 we need to come up with a name for it. How about uh, 3? And we'll call it 3, and we'll write it as a symbol. And likewise, we can come up with the successor of 3, the number following 3, call it 4, and write it this symbol, and so on. And this leads us directly to the piano definition of addition. And there are two parts. First of all, we're going to define what it means to write n plus 1. Well, n plus 1, by the piano definition, is the same as n star. In other words, n plus 1 is the number after n. Now, we have a somewhat more complicated 
second part of the definition, n plus k star. Well, that's going to be n plus k star. n plus the successor of k is the same as n plus k, the successor of whatever that number happens to be. And it might not be obvious why we have to define it in this rather strange way, uh, but we'll take a look at that when we see an example of how we apply these definitions. And so we'll let's take a little bit of a problem here. Let's prove using the piano definition of addition that 3 plus 2 is equal to 5. Now again, be very careful. This is a mathematics course. Prove has a very specific meaning. It doesn't mean tell me that this is true. I'm not going to ask you to prove something that isn't believed to be true. We already know 3 plus 2 is equal to 5, so the question is not find 3 plus 2, but rather to prove that it is using our piano definitions. And again, it may help to have our piano definitions for reference. Again, remember part of the reason for proof in mathematics is it reminds us of things that we should know. And in this particular case, the piano definition, we have two rules. The successor rule, n plus 1, is the number following n. And the addition rule, n plus k star, is the number following n plus k. And let's organize our proof by checking what we're trying to prove against our piano definition. So we want to prove using the piano definition. And our first rule deals with addition of n plus 1. And the thing to notice here is what we're adding is not 1, but it's 2. So we can't use the first rule, at least not directly. The second part deals with n plus the successor of k. And this looks promising because k star is the number after k. And first of all, because there's only two parts to the piano definition, I can't use the first part for this addition. I have to be able to use the second part. So let's see what we can do with that. And what makes it promising is 2 is the number after 1. So 2 is the successor of 1, otherwise known as 1 star. And so this suggests we can approach our problem as follows. First off, 3 plus 2 is the same as 3 plus 1 star because 2 is the successor of 1. 2 is the number following 1. Now, my piano definition says n plus k star is the same as n plus k, the successor of that. So here I have n plus k star. Well, that's the same as n plus k, the whole thing star, by our definition. Well, 3 plus 1, well, there's our first rule. n plus 1 is the number following n. So this is 3 star, star. Well, at this point I say, well, I know what the number following 3 is. The number following 3 is 4. So this 3 star is 4. And then, well, this is the number following 4. Well, I know what that is. The number following 4 is 5. So there's 3 plus 2 equals 5. And what's my proof? Well, I've completed the proof, and here's the important thing. The complete answer to a question of this type, prove, is going to include everything that's in blue. This entire statement, this entire set of statements, is the proof using the piano definition. I don't need to write down the piano definition as part of the proof. I need to use it as part of the proof, but it's not really part of the proof itself. The proof itself, all this stuff in blue.